Howdy. Wyo, Russ here. And Chris. I've been suspicious that I had dyslexia, but I wasn't quite sure, and I started taking a bunch of tests. I don't know how many I've taken, but almost every test I've taken online, I score like a 70 or higher saying I have dyslexia. It was like a light bulb went off in my head and I was like, wow, this is exactly what I've been dealing with most of my life. This is exactly what I've felt most of my life. I just literally, when I read, everything gets scrambled and I can't spell. Yeah, it seems like there's a good chance. We haven't figured out yet if there's like a way to have him officially tested. Okay, can you tell them what it was like when we read together? And we'd start reading and like he would read a page, I would read a page or a chapter, whatever it was we did, because it's been like four years ago. You know, there'd be just like words that he wouldn't say that were there or he would get lost on the lines yeah or make the word into something else that was kind of like it or maybe he would even see the word and might say the concept say it in a different way but not the way the words were written even simple words little short words that would just like poof, disappear you just wouldn't say them they weren't there but it's interesting because one of the first things ever when he was reading for some reason there was the word giraffe and i don't even know what you called it something different and he like had no clue what that was and they're like you like animals right but he had no clue what it was and i thought that was odd and but it turns out giraffe is one of the words that's pointed out that you very likely have problems with if you have dyslexia so kind of makes sense now when i was a little kid about five six seven i was having some major difficulties reading and i went through speech they'd be like this kid's fine he can speak fine he can comprehend everything but that wasn't the problem the problem was that I was having trouble reading and it just kind of got worse and worse and by the time I was in fourth or fifth grade they're like you can't read like you can do math but you need to go to a special class so I had to go to a special class by the time I was in seventh grade they moved me out of the special classes and I just felt so so happy I just no I'm serious I felt happy I felt I believe you. For a long time, I just felt so stupid. And I had my brother tell me I was stupid. I was like, dude, I'm not stupid. I wasn't perfect to him either. You know, brothers fight. What happens when I read, there's a movement keeps on going. And I only have like a limited amount of time to actually be able to try to register the words. And then certain words just like disappear on the page. And then I'll go back and read them. And they're still this, they're still not there. And then I go back and read them again. And finally, a word is there. And it's like, oh, my brain picked up on something. Um, Sometimes letters at the end of words will just like disappear. They're not there when I read them. That could be like... Like you do different tenses when you read. You'll read a word, oh, yeah. but it's a different tense than the word is written. If it's a long word, I'm almost guaranteed that the middle letters are going to be mixed up somehow. It's hard for me to write. So for your comments, I read and I have all these things I want to say, but once I start typing them, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed to type them because I know I'm going to have a bunch of typos. Even if I proofread it a hundred times, there's something I can't see. The only reason I can write poetry is because it's kind of based on sounds, meanings, melodies, and syllables. But for the most part, I mean, when I write music, it's all up here because it's easier for me. So if I don't comment to you guys in a long time, I'm sorry. I always want to. I love when this guy helps. How often do I have you proofread my comments? A good bit of the time, just in case, because you're you're concerned that it's backwards or spelled funny or what have you. So you'll have me do it. And I'm not always available to look at it. So basically, if he responds to you and it doesn't make any sense, that's <laughs> only because it doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not intentionally. So I don't know exactly if there's anything that can be done, because I've never studied dyslexia but we'll try to find out if there's methods that you can use to help out. Yes, it is something that I have overcome in a lot of ways. I took college English, uh, English 1010, I think it was called, but I, I worked really hard and I had a lot of people proofread my papers and I passed the class. I was the main character in plays. I was Beethoven in my fourth grade play. Everybody had to audition. I, I said that right. Everybody had to audition for the play. I ended up getting the lead role and I had all these lines. I couldn't say them. So what I did is I went home and I had my mom help me memorize them the first day. So everybody went back to school the next day. I knew the lines already because I was so mortified <laughs> of doing all the lines and trying to read them out loud in front of people. I had to memorize them all. How I got the part, how I auditioned for it is we had to sing a song. Oh. So it was a song that I already had up here. Yeah. It's not like I had to read lines. We had yeah. to sing a song. It's pretty common, and there's a lot of famous people that have had dyslexia. Jack Horner. Yeah, yeah. From the Museum of the Rockies that did all the consulting for Jurassic Park. Like the world's leading paleontologist. 
severely dyslexic, we found out. What I'll do is put a list right here of people that are dyslexic. Famous people that are dyslexic. Famous people that are dyslexic, <laughs> yeah, true. Your <laughs> niece knew, she was prophetic. Huh? She calls you Dee Dee. Dyslexic Dylan. Dyslexic Dylan. <laughs> I used to be called Dynamite Dylan. Too. <laughs> dyslexic Dylan. And actually, my sister uh, was having a lot of dyslexia problems when she was younger. She was writing letters really weird, like some backwards. It's supposed to be genetic. Well, be interesting to talk to all your family, find yeah. out what they've experienced. I used to think I was dyslexic because I would like look up a word in the back in the index. It wasn't even close, but. I think I was just doing it too fast. A lot of people are dyslexic a little bit. Like yeah, they have something. Bit. I'm not the, the most extreme, you know, I can still read and write. It's just I, I struggle a lot more <laughs> than a lot of people who don't have dyslexia. So when people say, oh, you're good at everything, no. <laughs> I'm definitely not good at everything. I am not. Anytime you read. I get really frustrated. It, it makes me so mad. It's just like, even like this college class, it, it's a lot harder for me to read. I have to reread things so many times and that's <laughs> just tough yeah it's just tough for me well you'll get through it but the moral is you can get over it and you can still be successful it's not like i would make it something that would like keep me from pursuing my dreams yeah. or even going to school the reality is you can you can overcome it if you really believe in it if you want to Yes, Jack Horner flunked out every class he ever had, he said, when we went to see him speak recently. But he has an honorary doctorate from MSU, and he's the world's leading paleontologist. So, there are ways to get around yeah. what life throws us. Steven Spielberg, but I'm okay. pretty sure he's dyslexic. It kind of gives me like a sense of relief, which is weird, but it's like, ah, oh, I understand what was wrong with me. <laughs> you should comment below if you struggle with dyslexia or if you think you might have it. Uh, a lot of people do have it a little bit. Make sure you guys subscribe to Wire Us, like this video, Wire Us, and Chris out.